What's going on fam? Welcome back to the channel. I have another Mizuno Made in Japan review for you guys today. I'm very excited to share this with you because I actually wore this boot for several months when I was playing back in Australia and there was a couple videos of me in this pair of football boots, different color obviously, but I am super excited to actually do a review on them and see if the shape and sizing fits well and how it compares with the DS Lite X-Fly 4 and 5, which are its main competitors. I am of course talking about the Morelia Neo 3 non-beta version with the regular tongue without the knit. So that's one that I think has a little more adjustability. I reviewed the beta version back when I first got back from Australia. There was a blue colorway, like a neon blue colorway. I ended up having two different colors in that video, so you can go check that one out. Not a huge fan of the beta version just because of the way it fit my foot, but the non-beta version version, which I wore the Morelia Elite or Morelia Neo 2 betas or Neo 2s made in Japan's in Australia, those were excellent. So I'm really hoping that these fit well because they are a boot that I'm hoping, hoping, hoping in a half size down are going to be really well. So as I said, half size, 8.5 US, brilliant there. UK 7.5, Euro 41, Brazil 40 and Japan 26.5. These are the Morelia Neo 3 Japan in this white and iridescent colorway. So this is where the running bird in the uh, this this logo here, the running bird from the Mizuno brand is in like this iridescent, almost white rainbow color, which is super, super cool. So made in Japan box, super simple, just a matte black box. And we are going to hop straight into the unboxing here. Very excited. One of the things this is their string bag. One of the things I always say about the Mizuno brand is you guys have such good quality products, both in your made in Japan line and in the elite models and non made in Japan versions as well. But you got to step up the game with these. Adler has a beautiful uh, string bag that comes with it. Really nice fabric that comes with it. Even the Nike and Puma, or I guess Puma doesn't have them, but even the Nike and Adidas bags are better than this. So come on, Mizuno, you got it. You guys can create a bag that's at least something nice and fabric-y. That would be legendary, especially for your elite and, or excuse me, not the elite, but the made in Japan models. So there you go. And then we're gonna hop straight into this. Oh, wow. These are super nice. Okay, so full disclosure on this particular model, one of my teammates actually has the beta version with this knit material through the uh, the lacing system. So I've actually seen this model in person and brand new in hand, these do not disappoint. I am so thrilled with how these look. You've got a little bit of gold accent through this silver sole plate, through that midfoot little rib that goes on there. And uh, you know, very, very standard made in Japan Mizuno Morelia Neo 3s. Super, super cool. So this is their little tag. They've got a little bit of a history on the inside of that as well. I probably won't read the entire thing, um, but it just shows a really awesome photo of the first shop back in, I believe it was 19, early 1910s. So um, I'm gonna pop this out really quick. So give you a good look of what the boots look like. Really fantastic looking football boots. This is a silo that is very, very similar to the DS Lite. X-Fly series from the Asics brand. Uh, this has always caught my eye as one of the most beautiful boots on the market just because of how silky and low profile this silo is. The fact that it has incredible quality K leather to it along the entire upper. It's got now with the updated version, the, the threes has a little bit of knit action here. I don't know what the heck this is for. We'll discuss that in a minute. Um, but as far as fit and finishes go and durability, these are some of the best boot on the market. So we'll stay tuned for some of the tech specs and we'll, I'll tell you guys why. So let's get these out of the box, get the other one. And uh, there's your right foot as well. So we'll pop this down here, put this there and then here we go. All right, so let's go over tech specs really quick. Fascinating thing about this boot is that this is technically their speed boot line, the Morelia. Obviously the Alpha came out, so that's kind of a very lightweight speed booty type boot as well. Uh, the crazy part about this boot in particular is that this non-beta version is actually five grams heavier 
than the standard Morelia 2, which if, depending on which one came out first, I actually have a review on those in, in a, like a teal, beautiful teal blue colorway. And that classic boot is actually a little bit lighter than this. I'm not actually sure where the extra five grams comes from. Maybe it's this just absolute nonsense of a, of a knit little heel counter thing that does nothing. Uh, maybe that's where the five grams comes from, but I am not sure. So one of the special things about the Morelia and the Made in Japan products just in general is they have a 24 hour lasting. So what that means is when you have the sort of fake plastic foot that they wrap the material, the upper material around and then tie the laces tight to make the shape of the boot around the sole plate. Uh, it's set for 24 hours, which gives it a much so much more solid build quality, lets the glue dry, lets everything kind of get a nice shape and fit for you. So it's already pre-molded to have a particular shape. Obviously these are a little bit on the thinner side. We'll see if they break in decently well enough, um, but I'm hoping that with the 8.5 US, which is a half size down, these will fit lengthwise perfectly and then we'll see how the, the width fits as well. This is of course Mizuno's kangaroo leather upper. So it's their best quality kangaroo leather upper in the Made in Japan series. So that's all the Made in Japan models get that same absolutely beautiful K leather on the forefoot and uh, through this midfoot area. I'm not actually sure if this is kangaroo leather as well. I'm pretty sure this is a fake synthetic leather, um, but what that does is basically add a little bit of weight saving and also adds uh, a bit of structure to that upper just because this is a little more of a performance oriented model with the addition of a bladed stud here and just a little bit more of an aggressive aggressive and futuristic sole plate compared to the Morelia 2, which is the kind of the, the basis from where this boot came from. You've got the external heel counter, which provides a uh, good foothold and kind of as you pivot and stuff, there's not going to be a whole lot of slippage side to side, which is really nice with the external heel counter. Internal heel counters work about the same way as well. And then you've got the graded nylon sole plate, which enhances flexibility um, and got has really nice weight benefits as well. So it's a pretty lightweight sole plate. You've got reasonable flexibility here through the forefoot area, but it does, uh, the, these Mizuno boots tend tend to aim to give you a nice barefoot feeling without it feeling super synthetic in the way that it compared to something like a speed flow, for instance, that's got a, or a speed speed portal, I should say, that's got an incredibly rigid sole plate. Some people really like that. I actually really like the speed portal, but I also do like sole plates that are a little bit more flexible. This is definitely gonna be more flexible than something like a Speed Portal, but it's not gonna be as flexible as something like a GX, if that makes sense. So it's somewhere in between, very, very standard, but it does have a really nice amount of rigidity and snapback through this little, um, kind of this, I don't know what you would call it, like a, like a center rib, if you will. So a couple other things about this, uh, you've got reconstructed studs as well. So I think what they're trying to say in a lot of their marketing materials is basically that the stud has uh, is softer, lower down, and more firm closer to the boot, which I'm not sure what that does. Maybe it's supposed to act like a sense stud, like a really, really tiny amount of sense studs like those old Nike Superflies did. I'm not really sure, but that's kind of the way they go for it. One of the things that I really like about this boot as well is it's got this uh, two lace hole system up at the top, which is really effective for what's called a runner's knot. And in several videos, I've actually done the runner's knot uh, for you guys on camera. But basically what you do is you loop, the instead of looping the laces through this hole here and then, then tying it, you loop it up through that one, down through the second one closer to your ankle, and then it comes over here and goes through that little loop that you've created on that side. And basically what that does is it allows you to pull this corner material, both that direction and that direction to give you the most effective lockdown through where this running bird is. So that's effectively what it does, gives you much more lockdown through the midfoot and allows your foot to kind of sink back into this suede heel liner on the uh, Morelia 3 Neos, which is really, really cool. So that's kind of the rundown of the tech features of this boot. I'm very excited to try these on. I think this is a stunning colorway. Absolutely, absolutely stunning. Not much else to go over with this boot. So I'm kind of going to leave it to the on feet portion, which is what I'm most excited about. I believe in my old review of the Morelia Neo 3 betas, the beta edition just didn't do it for me really. And I think I ordered a 9.5 and a 9. And I'm pretty sure that screwed me over because both of them were way too big. I'm, if, I, if my memory serves me um, in that video, you guys can see more, but 
I am so excited to try on the 8.5. The 8.5 is actually the size that I had down in Australia. It was with the previous generation though, so they've made some really minor improvements to leather quality. And of course, you've got this uh, little knit area here, which does absolutely nothing, like literally nothing. There's, it connects to nothing. It's got zero structure. I think it's just an aesthetic thing and I think it makes it potentially it makes it easier for when you have the beta version it's basically the same boot you just add the knit through this area here so maybe that's what they've done here i don't know why you could literally cut this off and it would be the same boot maybe it's just for aesthetic purposes who knows but bottom line is i'm very excited to try this pair of football boots on so without further ado let's get into the on feet portion of the video so we'll talk about how they compare with the uh, asics ds Lite x fly series from the asics brand and we'll kind of go from there. I'm also probably gonna do a full length comparison video between the two pairs of boots, just because the new X-Fly 5 came out and they are basically a direct comparison with this boot. And so I'm tempted to do a full length video on those just to kind of get uh, going with that and to give you guys a good idea of what made in Japan model you should purchase if you're interested in more of a speed boot that also has leather on it. So without further ado, let's hop into the on-feet portion of the video. All right, fam, out here at the pitch with the Mizuno Morelia Neo 3 in the non-beta version. These are just the Neo 3s uh, with the normal U-shaped tongue. I am very excited to try these on feet and get a sense of what they're like, how they feel compared to the Neo 2s that I wore back in Australia, and really give you guys an idea of whether these are the sort of more speed boot leather type boots to go for, as opposed to uh, maybe some of the other things that are on the market in the leather category that are a little more less speed boot focus let's hop into it so here is the boots again very very lovely looking color with that iridescent running bird the gold accents on the bottom super nice love that so we'll get these uh, on straight away um, again I've got the laces all the way undone um, I am going half a size down this is an 8.5 us because of the length of the football boot Ooh, nice okay so it is a little bit tight um, especially in this width area but I'm hoping that with this lacing system being so uh, kind of moldable to your foot, it's really gonna do a nice job. So if I tie the laces really lightly around my foot, it's not gonna be as tight as uh, it might be if I was to just crank those. Let's see if I can figure this out. There we go. Um, get this going. This is just, you're just watching me figure out how to tie my own shoes. How's that for a, a YouTube video, hey? Um, okay, there we go. So coming up and what my hope is, is they actually do feel really nice straight out of the box. This is the area right here on the lateral side where I'm feeling the most discomfort. Um, but again, it's not really discomfort. It's just a little bit of tightness on that outside um, because these boots do run a little bit on the thinner side, um, but they do feel pretty nice straight out of the box. I'm hoping that breaks in nicely because I do really like the way this boot feels. Um, we'll get the right foot on and my apologies if it does start raining, I'm gonna turn the camera off just because this I don't wanna get all my stuff wet um, here we go get this other one on very nice okay so eight and a half is definitely the size to go I would go half a size down um, based on US sizing just because my toe fits perfectly up there on um, the upper I think it fits my the shape of my foot a lot better than the nine US did the nine US just felt kind of sloppy and then there was all these weird like bowing of the upper as you usually get when you go uh, half a size or a full size too big that tends to happen so as I get these tied tight just keep that in mind um, for sizing if you are gonna buy them blind meaning you're gonna buy them without having tried them on. Um, these boots also give much better adjustability than the Neo Beta version. So the Beta version has a knit material. It's the same knit material that you find in this little collar back here. The knit material goes all the way through this lacing system and it really does uh, a nice job for some people who fit them really well. But for me, I prefer a U-tongue just because it gives a more adjustability through this midfoot and stuff. And then what I'm able to do with this runner's knot, I'm not gonna do it right now because the boots aren't broken in, but I can lace this through as I described before and then get that runner's knot so that there's no gap in between here and I can really pull that material flush with my ankle. But so far, the eight and a half actually feels really nice. I'm not getting any pressure points other than as as I said, the outside of my foot. So just as you can see, they do run a little bit on the thinner side. I'm hoping back here that they break in a little bit. That's one thing that the um, Neo 2 non-beta that I was a little bit concerned about and they hurt my feet a little bit because they weren't as wide as I wanted them to be. Um, but these actually seem to have a little bit more width to me, at least again, I may, 
it just may be, you know, hindsight's 2020 potentially, but for the most part, these actually feel really nice on feet. And I'm very, very impressed with the way that this boot fits and feels from a sizing perspective. Again, there's my toe right up on the end. So my toe is like pushing basically flush with the end of that boot you may want a little bit of extra space. So go ahead and go true to size. I decided to go half size down just because I like that super tight sensation. I'm hoping that once I break these in on the width that I'll be able to do the runner's knot on both sides and really pull those two sections of the boot tight so that it really molds to my foot. But right now, honestly, um, they feel really good. There's like full look at the boots. They look really nice. Um, this colorway is fantastic. You can't really argue with the, uh, the white with the silver accent. Um, touch on the ball for the Neo 3s is really lovely. This made in Japan leather on the forefoot area is awesome. And there's really no distractions when it comes to the way that the boot feels on feet. I would say that the sensation is definitely a little less plush than the Morelia 2 for obvious reasons. That's like a very classic leather football boot where you're not gonna get a ton of, um, there's, not, there's not gonna be any sort of synthetic or anything on them. They're just pure kangaroo leather bliss. Whereas these are much more kind of performance focused football boots. And I do think that that shows in the way that these fit and feel. There's, they're, they feel like you're much more on your toes. There's definitely a lot of agility going on there. Um, and touch on the ball feels really close and, and a little less plush, but still very, very barefoot, which for a leather football boot is really impressive. So I'm a huge fan of these. Um, it remains to be said, about the one month review if i can break them in i'm also going to do a comparison video between these and the ds Lite x fly fives that just came out and that's basically asics version of this boot it's a little more kind of speed all around focused football boot it has a regular u-shaped tongue it's got a lot of the same attributes with the beautiful kangaroo leather up on the forefoot area um, both made in uh, I, I don't think some, this one's made in Japan. I don't know if the A6 one is made in Japan. I think that's the made in Japan model, um, but they're both top tier leather football boots, both some of the best on the market as far as quality goes, as far as fit and comfort and all that stuff. So for me, this is a fantastic option. If you're looking for something that's a little more unique, not a lot of people have these. Um, the conical studs feel really nice underfoot. I've got a decent amount of pivot power, but I don't feel like I'm gonna lose any of that traction moving forward or laterally as well. So um, again, we'll go over all of kind of the performance benefits and all of the break-in time and everything as we move into the one month review which i'll which you guys will see a month to six weeks in the future just because i have so many boots i'm rotating it, i want to make sure that i actually am able to give you guys good feedback for that video so um but honestly these are sick like they're super super nice they're really really cool they're really lightweight as well which is awesome for a leather boot reminds me a little bit of the 99 gram um, adidas speed flows which i absolutely love and uh, but just a little bit more of a streamlined high quality version of those maybe so again if you guys are on the market for something a little more unique and you are interested in a mizuno product definitely check these out especially if you have thinner feet i think you're going to be totally fine in these and then if you have a wider foot just be aware you might have to kind of adjust sizing or just go with the classic morelia too so hope you guys enjoyed that video if you did hit that like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already if you guys are interested in doing any one-on-one -on -one calls whether it's to consult about your playing career you want advice on how to move up teams how to do technical sessions weightlifting all that or if you just want to talk boots let me know um, i have zoom calls available on my website noahcavanaugh.com shop you guys can check that out so thank you guys so much for watching again as always be awesome take care i'll see you guys in the next video